the Arctic Tundra. The Arctic Tundra is the coldest of the world's biomes. The Arctic Tundra is a treeless area near the Arctic where the ground is always frozen and there is very little plant life. The Arctic Tundra is found below the ice caps of the Arctic. Extreme cold and harsh winds in the Arctic Tundra have forced plants to adapt to carry out photosynthesis at colder temperatures. Due to permafrost, plants have to survive with shallow root systems. Because of a growing season only about 50 days in length, plants have had to change reproductive processes. Animals have adapted by hibernating during the cold winter where low amounts of food are available. Another adaptation is the extra fur and fat for insulation. An example, birds migrate to warmer areas to avoid the cold and lack of food. Arctic moss grows at the bottom of lakes. It has rootlets and small leaves. It has adapted to the cold by storing nutrients that allow leaves to grow the next summer. It is the slowest growing moss ever recorded. Because it can grow underwater, it is protected from drying winds and the cold dry air of the frozen tundra. The Arctic willow is a sideways growing tree that grows in cold, dry locations. It is one of the few plants on a tundra that is a shrub. Its leaves are dark green and its flowers are brown. Its shallow root system allows it to absorb nutrients from the permafrost. The arctic willow produces a pesticide to keep insects away. It leaves have adapted by growing long fuzzy hairs. The bearberry plant is pink and white. It is native to the tundra but can also be found in California. Oregon, Washington, and Alaska. Its low growth helps it to stay out of the wind and its silky haired leaves help insulate it from the cold. The Pasquay flower is purple to white in color. It is a low-growing plant that avoids the cold winds. It has silky haired leaves to provide insulation from the cold. The Arctic Fox. This fox finds its home in small burrows in frost-free ground. It is a scavenger, so it usually finds food. It follows the polar bear and feeds off the remains left behind. It is the size of a house cat. Its bushy tail provides warmth. Its fur-lined feet help keep it warm. As a predator, it moves very quickly. This fox eats both plants and animals. It is an omnivore.
The Arctic fox has adapted by growing fur that changes color with the seasons. Its long ears and nose are short to conserve heat, and its tail, when wrapped around itself, provides warmth. Polar bears are the largest carnivore on land, eating seals and other sea life. Light reflects off their clear coats so that they appear white. Their skin is black, which helps absorb heat to keep warm. They are around 10 feet tall and weigh about 800 pounds. They have a layer of blubber about four and a half inches thick. This, along with hollow shafts of hair, provide insulation. Their ears and tail are short so they don't lose heat. Their necks are longer than any other bear to keep their head out of water when they swim. The polar bear is listed as an endangered species. The musk ox has long hair and a woolly undercoat to provide insulation. It is approximately seven feet in length and weighs about 400 to 800 pounds. The musk ox uses summer daylight to eat plants in order to put on fat for the cold winters. They move to higher ground in winter where winds blow snow off the ground. The musk oxen have survived without many predators. They use herds to protect their young. The musk ox had been hunted for its fur and meat. Warmer climates have forced change of birthing, making them more vulnerable to grizzlies. Other native animals of the Arctic tundra include caribou, the ermine, and the snowy owl. Musk oxen use cooperation when threatened by predators such as wolves and dogs. The oxen group in herds and circle the wagons, positioning themselves with their young in the middle and their sharp horns facing outward toward their predators. Polar bears cooperate with arctic foxes by following them to finish the scraps after a polar bear has taken in prey. Recreational activities in the tundra include skiing, snowboarding, skating, dog sled racing, and mountain climbing. Points of interest are difficult to measure, but there are a few examples of cultural heritage. In Canada, visitors can learn about the way of life of the Trondek Huechen people at the Danaja Zhao Cultural Center. In Inari, Finland, Visitors can learn about the Sami people's dancing, clothing, and hunting practices at the Sami Cultural Center. Nearby biomes include the Northern Conifer Forest, and the temperate, deciduous, and rainforest.
the Arctic tundra recei receives less than 10 inches of precipitation per year. The average temperatures range from negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter to 35 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer. Clothing for Tantra visitors in the summer can be as simple as jeans and warm sweaters. However, in the winter, specialty garments to protect against extreme conditions are advised as well as layering. Sufficient food and heating supplies are necessary as well as a first aid kit and signaling devices. The greatest threats to the Arctic tundra are oil and gas development as well as global warming. With warming comes a melting of permafrost, a decaying of the dead plant material it contains, and a release of more CO2 which accelerates global warming. Scientists feel that with global warming will come a shorter tundra winter and melting of snow cover and permafrost which will flood coastal regions. Plants will die, animals will migrate to survive, and the tundra will be gone. Two main items of importance regarding the Arctic tundra. The permafrost can help track climate changes since any temperature change leaves its mark on the permafrost, the land that never thaws. The permafrost contains carbon that would escape into the atmosphere. If global warming continues, this carbon will be released, speeding up the increase in temperatures.